Well, hello and welcome. Welcome everyone to this very special live telephone town hall meeting. We can see we already have some folks joining us on the line right now. Thank you so much for being here early. We will get started in just a few moments. So please stay on the line as we continue connecting to more and more of your neighbors in California's 26th district. Again, hello and welcome. Welcome everyone. We are inviting you tonight to join Congresswoman Julia Brownlee for this very special live telephone town hall meeting. This call is an opportunity for you to ask questions, share your concerns, and get updates on the latest from Congress. So with that being said, we want to hear from you. If you have any questions now or at any time throughout this call that you would like to bring live, please go ahead and press zero on your phone keypad. Again, you can press zero on your phone to submit your questions. And if you'd prefer me, the moderator, to read your questions over the air tonight, I certainly don't mind. Just be sure to let your operator know that that is what you would prefer. Also tonight, we're always trying to expand our email list. So if you would please go ahead and press seven, you'll be able to provide us with your email. And you'll be able to receive the latest from Representative Brownlee's office. Feel free to give your phone number as well if you'd like text updates. To get more information after the call, you can visit juliabrownlee.house.gov. We'd also like to invite you to follow Representative Brownlee's social media pages. You can find her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and her handles on all three platforms are at Rep Brownlee. That's capital R and a capital B. So at Rep Brownlee, you'll be able to find her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For those of you who are just joining us on the line, I want to welcome you. Hello, good evening. We are inviting you and thousands of others in California's 26th district to join Congresswoman Julia Brownlee for this very special telephone town hall meeting. This call is an opportunity for you to ask questions, share your concerns, and get updates on the latest from Congress. During this call, we encourage you to press zero to connect with an operator to submit your question. We will be taking those questions live, and we would love to have you bring your question forward after we hear from your Congresswoman. However, if you don't feel comfortable going live, just let your operator know, and I will be more than happy to read your question over the air. So either way, still press zero to submit those. Another reminder, and I will be sure to remind everyone a few times throughout tonight's call to press seven at any time if you would like to provide us with your email to stay in the loop and receive the latest from the representative's office. Feel free to give your operator your phone number as well if you'd like text updates. So again, we'd like to invite you as well to follow Representative Brownlee's social media pages Again, you can find her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Her handles on all three platforms are at Rep Brownlee. And again, that's capital R, capital B. So with that, I'd like to officially get this call started off by turning it right over to your Congresswoman, Julia Brownlee, who happily serves California's 26th Congressional District. Congresswoman, please take it away. Thank you so much, and hello to everyone, and thank you all for uh, joining me tonight for this uh, telephone town hall and for taking part in a, an important conversation around the Build Back Better uh, agenda. So for almost two years now, Americans across the country and across Ventura County have experienced tremendous hardships and challenges. Our local and national economies were thrown into a tailspin with complete turmoil and families fearing for the health of their loved ones, all the while having to do their jobs and even keep their jobs. Business, businesses, both big and small, had to navigate the ebbs and flows of the virus and changing consumer habits while completely restructuring what a workplace looked like. We clearly needed bold, big, and immediate help from the federal government. Our first major legislative push was the American Rescue Plan. While it was not perfect, it was essential to getting shots and arms, protective gear for frontline workers, millions of workers back to work, and money in the pockets of families who weren't sure what the future held. 
In Ventura County, over 40,000 households, aiding over 145,000 children, saw immediate relief via the expanded child tax credit. It was not only credited at propping up the economy, giving families a much needed sense of security, but it also served to raise millions of children out of poverty at a time when the effects of the pandemic were shedding a bright light on how deeply socioeconomic status impacted families in vastly different ways. The next phase of the president's response to the pandemic, what we call the Build Back Better agenda, was, was to put another booster shot into the economy by investing in our nation's crumbling infrastructure. The bill was designed to invest in badly needed infrastructure improvements, which would have the win-win effect of investing in our long-term success while creating millions of jobs in the near term. We also designed the bill so that it was laser focused on building back with the impacts of climate change in mind. From resiliency to upgrading our grid to building out our electric vehicle charging capacity to investing in clean water and high-speed internet, the investments will create jobs, help our economy flow more smoothly, and reduce the impact of climate change for generations to come. The final leg of the Build Back Better agenda is to invest in our people, in families, and our children. The Build Back Better Act will deliver lower health care premiums, reduce the cost of prescription drugs, lower child care costs, expand paid leave, expand access to universal preschool, and the expanded child tax credit, which is transformational in lifting families and children out of poverty. And we're paying for the entire bill without adding a penny to the debt by asking the very, very wealthy and very profitable big corporations to pay their fair share of taxes in return for the hard work Americans contributed towards their success. It's a good deal. It's a fair deal. And it's a transformational deal for our future. That is why I'm working to get the Build Back Better Act past the finish line and to the president's desk. This evening, I want to answer your questions about these two bills, one for infrastructure and one for families, and how both will impact you and our community directly. Since being elected to Congress, I've fought for the needs of Ventura County's families, our children, our veterans, our service members, and our businesses to succeed, and I believe these two transformational bills will go a long way to improving our economy and improving our lives. Well, I know we won't get to every question, you, you will have an opportunity at the end of the call to leave a message for me. Also, if you were unable to ask your question, please feel free to reach out to my office or contact me through my website at juliabrownlee.house.gov. I really want to hear from all of you. And with that said, let's take the first question. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. And I do want to give just a quick reminder that you can still get in line with your questions by pressing zero. We will be taking your questions live. However, if you'd rather have me read your question, just go ahead and let your operator know. You can also press seven to receive any important updates moving forward via your email address. So go ahead and press seven on your phone keypad to do that. And you can also give your phone number if you're looking to receive some text updates. So Let's get right to it. Looks like our question, our first question here, Congresswoman, is coming to us from Felicia, who's asking, I think fixing our roads and bridges is the best way to recover from the pandemic, and we'll also see dividends for decades to come. Why isn't that enough? So that's coming from Felicia. Well, uh, thank you, Felicia, for the question. And, and you're right, fixing our roads and bridges is uh, a, a, an excellent way to recover from the pandemic because it's going to create jobs uh, and good paying jobs for the American people. Um, so investment in traditional infrastructure is very, very important um, and, you know, good for jobs and it certainly allows big and small businesses to move goods uh, more in, more efficiently. But investing in, I believe, in human infrastructure is it's investing in the middle class and, and addressing some of the financial pressures American families across our country um, are feeling. And investing in human infrastructure also means 
getting more women back into the workforce and creating an environment for them to stay in the workforce. One in four women left the workforce during the pandemic. And when we're looking at our economy, I always like to quote Warren Buffett, who says, our economy will be the strongest if we unleash the other half. And what he means is unleashing the other half, unleashing the uh, the, the women to participate um, in our economy. And so when when women can work, they will have more money to support their families and more money to put back into the economy. And when women do better, their children do better, and our economy will do better uh, going forward. So I really do believe that during the pandemic, we, we talk about having a recession. We had a recession during the pandemic, but I really like to call it a she session because it impacted women so severely. Again, one in four women uh, left uh, the workforce because of lack of child care, lack of child care affordability, lack of elder care, lack of pre-K, lack of paid family leave, caused women really truly to bear the brunt of the economic fallout uh, from the pandemic. So, um, Felicia, again, thank you for the question. And I, I really do think that both are going to build the important building blocks to a, a very, very strong economy for our future. Yeah, thanks so much, Felicia, for that uh, question and joining our conversation. Looks like our next caller is Bill in Thousand Oaks. Bill, welcome to the call. Please go ahead. Um, hi, Julia. Really appreciate your leadership and your support for the uh, infrastructure bills. But uh, I've, I've become very, very concerned about the way that the negotiations with Senator Manchin have, have really cut down the bills in some very significant and, I think, harmful ways. And what makes it disheartening, I think, to myself and many other Democratic voters is that he really has not uh, come through. He has not given anything in return. And what I find so troubling about that, aside from the senator himself, is why is it that Democrats in Congress, recalling also the ACA and taking into account the current voting, Voter Rights Act, uh, why is it that we continue to give people like that major concessions while seemingly receiving nothing in return. Yeah, Bill, I I hear you on that. Uh, I share a lot of uh, a lot of your uh, same concern about it. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, the the Democratic majority and the Senate, uh, as you know. Um, is we need every single uh, every single vote, Democratic vote in the Senate. Uh, the Republicans have said they're, you know, not going to support uh, this Build Back Better agenda. Um, and uh, so, you know, we we have to we I mean we we have to find some uh, common ground between uh, Joe Manchin and actually Kirsten Sinema had things to say about it um, as well. But I I do believe that. Most of the bill, particularly the bill that we passed out of the House, which was comprehensive, um, included, I think, almost everything that uh, e – every part of the Build Back Better agenda, and we sent it over to the Senate. At first, we were – we thought that we would, you know, put in that, that compromise bill in terms of some of the things that Joe Manchin was saying, but we said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to send what we believe – is, is the right bill to, to move forward. So I, th I do think that we're not going to get everything that we want, um, but I think that um, we're going to get the preponderance of the Build Back Better agenda because actually most every element of, of the Build Back Better agenda has been what we call sort of pre-conference. In other words, you know, both sides have agreed. Um, so I'm counting on uh, Mr. Manchin and his I vote uh, at the end of the day, and that's what he's going to give back is to give a comprehensive, uh, uh, a comprehensive, comprehensive bill, a 1.7 trillion dollar bill that is going to really build back our economy and make life much better uh, for middle class families, and um, make sure that. 
the wealthiest among us, and greedy corporations are pay paying their fair share to get it done. So um, I think right now the Senate is in intense negotiations with Mr. Manchin of, uh, over the voting rights bill. So his name is on that bill, um, and he should be supporting it. We've got to you know, unleash the filibuster. Uh, we just unleashed the filibuster for the – uh, debt ceiling bill that was that was passed, uh, you know, bill to just pay our bills, um, and uh, we're counting on him to uh, support uh, the voting rights bill and most importantly support our democracy because our democracy is really on the line. Great, thanks so much, Bill. Really appreciate you joining the conversation here as well. Another reminder that if you still have a question that you haven't submitted, you can do so by pressing zero on your phone keypad. So with that, getting right to our next question here, we have Mark, also in Thousand Oaks, joining us live on the line. Mark, welcome. Go ahead with your question. I appreciate the time. So regarding the Build Back Better, you know, regardless of spin, regardless of whatever, you know, we know that the polls are showing that while they like the parts of the plan, the plan as a, as a whole is not popular. And that it was proven that the comments over and over that it's paid for was not true. So, and remember that you live in a somewhat conservative area. So how do you ignore the polls on this? And in regards to bringing back, bringing kids out of poverty with short-term checks, you know, I mean, isn't that just a short-term thing? How many were taken out of poverty? And now because of uh, inflation, how many did you just throw back into poverty? Well, uh, I, I hear what you're saying, Mark, and I, I, I think, you know, the, the, the child tax credit um, has lifted many, many children out of poverty. Uh, we need to make uh, that child tax credit permanent. Um, that's, it is, you're correct that it is not permanent in the Build Back Better agenda, but that is certainly uh, the goal, is to make it uh, permanent. And what's different about the child tax credit in the Build Back Better agenda and the American Rescue Plan, actually, is uh, it's a fact different from what the child tax credit has been in the past is that it is putting money in people's pockets every single month. Um, previously, you would get a child tax, you would get the credit after you did your income tax and you would get that as a deduction. Now you're getting a monthly check and it's made a huge difference uh, uh, it, with with families who are just trying to make ends meet, uh, to put food on the table, to put clothes on the backs of their children. So uh, it, it has been, it has absolutely been uh, critically, critically uh, in, in important. And, you know, the, it's, it's uh, I, I mean, and, and families in Ventura County, uh, across the county, have really, truly benefited from it and are concerned about it, its continuation. And that's why we have to get make sure that the Build Back Better um, a, a bill gets, gets passed and signed by the president. Well, thank you so much, Congresswoman. And uh, thanks, Mark, for joining the conversation here as well. Looks like we have Sylvia up next here in Westlake Village. Sylvia, you are now live. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, this is Sylvia Lenhardt, and I just wanted to voice my appreciation for your hard work and dedication to us people. As an educator and also a mental health care professional, um, I know that a um, lot of financial needs will be, and hopefully will be directed to families and children. Um, I work with a lot of individuals um, that are experiencing housing insecurity. And so my question is related to, will money be uh, used to build low-income housing for families and consequently other children, you know, to in the effort to get them out of poverty and out of housing insecurity. Thank you so much. 
Uh, thanks, Sylvia, and, and thanks for uh, the question. That it, it really is uh, an important one. And, uh, you know, within the Build Back Better bill, uh, we are making a historic investment uh, into housing to the tune of $150 billion uh, towards affordable housing infrastructure. Uh, the money includes funding to rehabilitate um, affordable housing and to build new affordable housing. It, there's also money in there to support, you know, first generation home buyers with their uh, down payments. It provides rental assistance uh, um, uh, to folks who are renting to make sure that, uh, you know, that, that they can afford um, what the what the rental costs are. It eliminates the nation's flood insurance uh, program debt. That might not sound uh, that important, but it, what it does by, you know, sort of eliminating uh, that debt, it, it will keep uh, uh, premiums down, uh, certainly uh, for, uh, for homeowners. But affordable, sustainable housing is key to our nation's long-term growth uh, in its prosperity. Um, everyone should have the opportunity uh, to achieve the American dream of home ownership. Uh, home ownership is key to family financial stability and saving for a secure retirement. You know, home equity is the number one way that Americans save and build wealth uh, for themselves and their families. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud that we are making a, a, a strong historic uh, investment in affordable housing. And again, Sylvia, I thank you. Thank you for the question. Absolutely. Great conversation. Next up, we have a question coming in from Mary, who would rather not go live tonight. She's asking, my son is about to graduate high school, and I am not sure how we are going to pay for his college. I heard there is something for college in the bill. Can you explain? Uh, thanks, Mary. Um, another uh, it, it, very, very important uh, question. And um, yes, there is. Uh, you know, initially we wanted to, and, and part of the of, of Biden's agenda, President Biden's agenda, was to have free uh, community college. We weren't able to keep that um, in the bill, um, but there is. There is a, a big, a large amount of money for uh, Pell Grants and increasing Pell Awards um, so that um, college can be more affordable uh, to those who want to attend. So the Pell Grant currently is uh, to the tune of $1,400. It's increased. Uh, um, it, it 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 would be increased, excuse me, to fourteen hundred dollars, but that's about a five hundred and fifty uh, dollar um, increase on the Pell Grants. Uh, dreamers uh, or dreamers would also be eligible, uh, you know, uh, for the program. Uh, it includes a very large investment in historically black colleges and universities and Hispanic serving institutions. And Hispanic serving institutions in Ventura County include uh, uh, Cal State, the CSUCI, Moore Park College, Oxnard College, and Ventura College. So these are these investments are really critical to help uh, you know certainly underrepresented students to kind of climb, if you will, the income ladder. Um, and it 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 also includes uh, resources uh, for teacher. Uh, re Recruitment, professor recruitment, certainly at the K-12 level, uh, we're, we're looking at teacher shortages. And so th th this bucket of money, if you will, will be helpful both at the K-12 through and college level. It includes funds for uh, universities um, to reduce uh, the cost of postgraduate education. And it, it, it also provides a lot of resources um, to fund uh, research uh, in innovation and in innovation at uh, you know in our universities uh, across the country, which are key certainly for job creation and economic growth, but most importantly uh, for the United States to really uh, remain and 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 be a leader, but remain competitive in a global marketplace. Uh, we obviously want to be the leader in the global marketplace, but. 
uh, innovation and research uh, and and the best of that uh, you know comes out of our uh, out of our uh, out of our universities and I certainly am a strong believer that uh, California is the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world because foundationally we have such a strong uh, UC uh, system, state university, and community college system, and, and that's why we are where we are. So thanks again, uh, Mary, for the question. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, getting a lot of really great questions in tonight. Just a quick reminder as well here that you can still get in line with your question by pressing zero. You can also still have that option to press seven to receive important information moving forward via email. So if you're looking to receive any text updates as well, you can go ahead and give your operator your phone number. Uh, so again, pressing zero to submit a question and pressing seven for email updates. So with that, our next caller representative, it looks like we have Gail in Ventura live on the line with us. Gail, go ahead. Uh, yes, um, I work in healthcare and I'm in the middle class and the discussion is that healthcare prices uh, with insurance and meds are going to be lower. However, the um, Republicans indicate that it's still going to come off the backs of the middle class. What are your cutoffs for, you know, people being able to get lower costs for their insurance they're they're ridiculous now and you know the middle class is shrinking um and you know we're paying most of the taxes we're paying full time full for our kids to go to school where everybody else is getting you know low and i'm i'm very much a supporter of the underserved but i feel like you know we're we're carrying the burden not the big corporations. Well, yeah, thanks, Gail, for that. And you know, really, the overall, the entire purpose of the uh, Build Back Better agenda is to is, is to build and grow the middle class. That's its that's its purpose, um, without question. And with regards to uh, health care costs, the um, the bill allows Medicare to negotiate drug prices. Uh, you know, we've been fighting to negotiate drug prices since I've been in Congress. Um, and uh, so that's in the bill. Um, that obviously will reduce a, a, a lot of costs around around drugs over time. It's, you know, this is going to th – these negotiations will take place year after year after year, and we'll select, you know, 100 or so drugs at the beginning and negotiate, a, a, you know, an, another – uh, grouping of drugs and so forth. So, um, but it will reduce out-of-pocket costs uh, for everybody, and certainly for our seniors, it'll reduce the cost of overall health care for most American families. It uh, the bill also creates a new uh, out-of-pocket cap of of two thousand dollars on what seniors pay for prescription drugs in Medicare. Uh, it Insulin is a huge issue um, for many many families, and I have certainly during the whole Affordable um, Care Act and that discussion, I mean, so many families who uh, outreached our office and concerned about the cost of insulin. And so this bill ensures that insulin is no more than $35 a month. It, you know, ceiling right on that. Sig significantly lowers premiums in the ACA marketplace. Uh, premium, premium reductions of more than $800 per year uh, per individual expands access to home health care assistance for uh, seniors and individuals uh, with disabilities. I'm a firm believer that if people can get their health care uh, at home, particularly aging uh, seniors and individuals with disabilities, if they can get it at home, they would prefer to get it at home versus, uh, you know, institutionalized care. It ensures uh, Medicare covers hearing aids. It includes resources um, for pandemic preparedness so that hopefully we never have to go through any of this again. Um, it uh, makes the Children's Health Insurance Program, um, cover, it, it, it makes that permanent, so millions of children across our country will be uh, permanently covered uh, for their health care. 
and it includes funding for maternal, uh, infant, and, and children's health care to, to lower both maternal and infant mortality rates in our country. But there's actually more in the bill than I'm actually mentioning, but it is, you know, it, there is a big, big section in the bill um, on, on health care um, to bring down and bend the curve in terms of, of health care costs. You know, and as you talk about the middle class, there are so many other pieces in this bill that are going to put money in, in the in the pockets of middle class families. Um, and whether it's we're talking about our uh, climate, whether we're talking about uh, child care, whatever the child tax credit, there are so many elements within this within this bill that are going to help uh, middle class families and help uh, grow our economy and, and lift all boats. So, I, uh, Gail, thank you again for the question. All right. Yeah, thank you so much. Next up here, we have Don in um, Ohio. Don, welcome to the call. Go ahead. Hi, Julia. Don Dyer calling. How are you? Thank oh, you good. so much. How are you? Doing great. Thank you so much for uh, having this call and all you're doing for us. Um, I am a housing market analyst and land use expert, and I want to echo the comments that were made earlier about housing affordability. In fact, uh, the, according to the California Association of Realtors, the December median statewide home price is up to about $718,000. That's the median. And rents are up nearly 11% uh, year over year as of last July and continuing to climb, so that a family would need to earn over $83,000 a year just to afford to rent a two-bedroom apartment in Ventura County based on standard qualifying income. So um, I really appreciate the support for housing in the Build Back Better plan. I also want to ask you, however, um, about anything that is in there for transit. I'm a big supporter of transit-oriented development as a way to combine both our housing and transportation needs to help address climate change. And then uh, kind of a companion question to one asked, asked earlier about um, some of your fellow Congress people. Um, you know, you're on board, our California senators are on board. How best can we help um, impact change and sway um, Senator Cinema and Manson to get this thing over the goal line. So two questions there I snuck in. Thank you. Yeah, Th yeah thanks, John. Um, I'll, 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 I'll talk a little bit about the transit-oriented development because I, uh, you know, I concur with you uh, wholeheartedly that we want to, you know, build communities around uh, transit, build, you know, c communities with affordable housing um, around uh, transit and uh, that's good for climate uh, and uh, the climate crisis. And I will tell you that there is a, a big portion in the infrastructure bill to do exactly what you're talking about, um, to, to direct funds for exactly what you're saying, for transit-oriented development. Um, and uh, around and and you know kind of coupled with with the affordable housing piece, so um, it is right there. I, I sit on the transportation committee, so I was sort of intimately involved in the whole development around sort of the transportation uh, piece of it. And um, you know, we, we there is uh, there is quite a bit of money in there for for public transit. Um, uh, in the bill, but we actually wanted even more uh, money in transit. We, you know, we wanted to say, yes, we have to, you know, we have to build our, we have to repair our roads uh, and repair our bridges. That's critically important. But we don't want to keep, you know, widening freeways. Uh, we want to put more money in transit than, you know, expanding uh, freeways and highways. Um, and we want to build transit corridors, you know, along those sort of uh, highway uh, highway areas. Um, so, but but there is a substantial amount uh, of money in there for public transit, and exactly what you're sa what you're saying about you know building community uh, around uh, public transit. So um, we need 
everybody, we need your help, you know, to get uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema uh, over the finish line. I think Kirsten Cinema uh, is good on, you know, the entire climate piece of the bill. She has zero problems with it. I think Joe Manchin is is fine on this uh, on this part of the bill. There are some uh, pieces around um, uh, uh, tax rebates for plug-in cars that are union-made that he wants to make sure that it doesn't matter whether they're union-made or not union-made, but um, American-made, uh, that those rebates uh, will in, will be included for the consumer. But you need to call in. We, we, we need everybody to call in, to jam their phone lines, uh, and tell them how important this is uh, to uh, for the American people. And I need that's what I need you to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dawn, for joining us. And I want to give just one last reminder. I want to encourage folks who haven't done so already to press 7 to provide an operator with your email address. So your email and or your phone number if you'd like to get text updates uh, just moving forward from the Congresswoman's office. So again, this is one of the best ways to stay current. So press 7 now to sign up. With that, I'd like to welcome our next caller. We have Katie and Oxnard. Katie, go ahead. You're live. Uh, good evening, Julia. This is Katie Krull from Oxnard Family Circle, and I will be very brief. I, I am here calling on behalf of the veterans of Oxnard Family Circle, where I work, and the veterans asked me to speak on their behalf and express a tremendous gratitude to you for upcoming Veterans Medical Center, the clinic, you were the huge <laughs> engine behind. So this, uh, they, are, they are so happy. They are so proud, so appreciative. And they are so proud of the work you do, your office. They are very helpful. And actually, they asked me to thank you for who you are, for what you do for them. Thank you. That's it. I'm done. Well, thanks, Katie. And I um really looking forward to cutting the ribbon on that clinic as well. It was a, a long time uh, coming. I've walked the facility. It is going to be a very, very impressive facility um, that is going to bring a lot more specialty care uh, to our area so our veterans don't have to go into West L.A. and Sepulveda um, to uh, get their health care. They'll be able to get their um, primary care, their specialty care, their mental health care, all in one facility. And it will be one of the very first facilities on the West Coast um, that will actually have a separate entrance for our women veterans and and certainly health care for our women veterans. So our women veterans can walk into their own area of the clinic uh, to receive their health care. And, you know, for a lot of facilities across the country uh, with veterans, it's been – it's very intimidating for women, you know, to walk into a lobby full of, of male veterans um, sometimes getting harassed, et cetera. And so these women will have their own their own part of the facility where it can be peaceful and they can uh, receive their health care. So I am so anxious about cutting uh, cutting the ribbon on that facility and 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 thanks, Katie. And you know we are I care so much about our veterans in Ventura County, and I will continue to work hard for each and every one of them. Thanks so much, Congresswoman. And next up here, we have Ray in Thousand Oaks. Ray, you're now live. Please go ahead with your question. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. I just, Congresswoman Brown, I just want to say thank you for working hard for us. And I know it's been difficult for you because of the pandemic, just like it has for us. I just want to say thank you for all the hard work. My question was initially around a cost for college, but you kind of answered that. So I wanted to change it a little bit. I was reading an article today about the U University of California and California State School saying there's not enough seats available even for the students that want to go to these schools. Do you know if there's any sort of money or any sort of plans, any sort of looking at increasing these uh, seats available for students to be able to go to these schools? And also, is anybody thinking outside the box and potentially – um, uh, creating more ways for people to take uh, classes from home during the pandemic 
there's been a lot of, of interesting and inventive ways that schools have created to basically, I'm talking about universities here, to basically let people take their classes from home. Is there something that's being looked at to say, let's create a whole system to let people do this rather than making them go into the campus? Yeah, uh, thanks, Ray. Um, you know, I, I before being in Congress, I was uh, a state legislator, and I actually chaired the Education Committee, so I actually know a lot about this. But this, you know, that what you're asking really comes under the jurisdiction of the state legislature, um, and and not Congress. So, um, you, you know, so it's it's I certainly have been and will continue to be a very strong advocate for. California students and our UC system come first, um, and uh, and I've al always been a strong proponent of uh, more resources out of the the out of the state budget to go to the UCs, to the state universities, uh, to the community colleges, for that matter, um, uh, in order to keep their uh, tuition low and you know expand access for. Uh, kids from California. Uh, I think that that's uh, extraordinarily important. And, you know, typically in a UC system, if you're going to UCLA or Berkeley, you know, they'll they'll charge out-of-state students more, and, and that becomes a, a, a resource for the university itself. So it's important that the state legislature and state budget really helps to subsidize that so that we can keep priority to uh, California kids. I don't know, I would imagine um, that the university systems are, are, are certainly coming up with creative ways in which to um, take classes from home. I, I, I think, you know, there are not many, I hate to even say a silver lining from the pandemic, but I think that uh, one silver lining is um, it was pretty successful for kids, college kids, taking uh, classes, taking classes online. And so I would imagine, but I, I really I can't tell you with any certainty. But I would imagine that the uh, that the, the the California systems are, are are looking into that. I wish I could give you a more definitive answer, but I uh, I and I think I read the same article that 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 you read uh, today as well. But I, I can't give you a definitive answer because it really comes under the jurisdiction of the state legislature. Well, I appreciate you, Congresswoman. And thanks, Ray, uh, again here just for joining our conversation. Next up, it looks like we have time to maybe squeeze another question in here. Uh, we have Matthew, who'd rather not go live, who's saying, how does the infrastructure bill deal with climate change? Well, uh, Matthew, thank you for the question, and uh, this is uh, a, a very important question and an, a, another area of the bill that I have worked very, very hard on. Um, and uh, I, between the infrastructure bill and the Build Back Better bill, there is almost, almost a trillion dollars uh, invested uh, in climate, it is the largest investment to, co to combat the climate crisis in the history of our country. Um, it will make a huge dent in laying the foundation towards a clean energy future. It is a very, very big deal um, what has transpired. So there are, you know, it's over $300 billion in renewable energy and energy efficiency tax incentives. Uh, to meet the goals of reducing emissions by 50% 50, 50 by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Um, those are the Paris Agreement goals. Those are Biden's goals, and that's what this bill is aiming for. Um, there is a tons of money, again, for uh, climate pollution reduction grants for, for states, for counties, for cities. Um, it includes tax credits for purchasing zero emission uh, vehicles, and as I said earlier, these uh, these are, are rebates at the point of sale. Um, and uh, it also has a huge piece in there for methane reduction. 25 percent of the planet's warming is driven by methane. So if we can get rid of methane, we we uh, really can 
keep the temperature levels where where we want. Uh, it includes funds for uh, zero emission, uh, medium and heavy duty vehicles. Um, that's a, a, a piece of this uh, Build Back Better agenda around that is a bill that I worked on. Also another bill that got included uh, in the package is the are the green bus provisions and funding for zero emission transit buses and school buses. There is a, a component piece of, a, of another bill um, that got included uh, in this larger Build Back Better a bill on sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, the, we're not going to be able to plug in airplanes anytime soon, but if we can put uh, cleaner fuels in airplanes, uh, that's good for climate. Um, and it also includes a Buy Back America provisions that ensure that, you know, clean energy technology, wind turbine blades, solar panels, electric cars are built in the United States. And again, going back to creating thousands of really uh, good paying jobs that are good for our environment and uh, good for our economy. So uh, this is a, a extremely important uh, component um, uh, to the Build Back Better bill. Um, and uh, I, I, I thank you, Matthew, for the question. Absolutely. And it does look like we have reached our allotted time. Thank you so much, Representative Brownlee. And thank you to all of you and our listening audience for your participation and joining us on this live telephone town hall tonight. We did answer as many of your questions as we could. However, if your question was not answered, we do encourage you to stay on the line until the very end of this call to leave us a voicemail message. So simply follow the prompts and leave us your name and best contact information so that we have a fighting chance of reaching back out to you. You may also grab more information after this call by visiting juliabrownlee.house.gov and visiting those social media pages. So you'll find the representative on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All of her social media handles are at Rep Brownlee. So that is capital R, capital B. And again, we do sincerely appreciate and value your time. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and ask Representative Brownlee to bring us to the finish line. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you all for uh, joining me this evening and participating in uh, what I believe to be a very important uh, conversation. And it certainly is a conversation that I'd like to continue with you over time. And certainly as specific legislation moves forward in Congress to implement the Build Back Better agenda, I hope you will reach out to me with your views. Um, again, I'd like to Thank all of you for joining us for this update on the work I'm doing for you and your family in Congress and throughout Ventura County. We've, we've made significant progress in fulfilling President Biden's bold vision to build back better, and we must keep the momentum uh, going. We are at a poignant moment in our history, a once-in-a-generation opportunity to make transformational investments in America's working families. We have the opportunity to uplift women and their families, uplift our communities, and uplift our nation as a whole. And Congress must meet this moment, and I am working with my colleagues to get us there. And as always, it is my most sincere honor to serve you in Congress. I hope you will all continue to stay in touch uh, hearing from you is really important to how well I legislate, so I really do want to hear from you, and please stay in touch. And I wish each and every one of you a joyous and healthy holiday and a very prosperous new year. So thanks again. All the best.